Okay, now we're going to look at the interpretation, the analysis and the interpretation of e these financial statements. On completing the financial statements, the owner is now in a position to analyze and interpret the results of the business activities. The results of his analysis are compared with those of the previous year and are used to determine the future policies of the business strategies. The financial statements also enable him to determine the following. He will determine the profitability, liquidity and solvency. Now we're going to discuss those things and show you certain ratios to calculate those things. Now what's the value of analyzing these statements? Obviously, the owner is able to determine the profitability of his business. That is, he can see whether the capital invested and risk is providing him with an adequate return. He can determine the efficiency of the purchasing policy, stock control policy and sales policy. He can also establish whether the operating or whether the operating expenses are within acceptable limits. Okay, those are not the only values of um, interpreting these financial statements. He is also able to determine the liquidity of the business and what does that mean? The ability to pay off its short-term debt. He is also in a position to compare the results of the business activities with those of previous year and also with other similar businesses. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you the ratios. Obviously, the following calculations are used to determine the profitability of a business. Percentage gross profit on turnover, that's your net sales. It's your gross profit over sales times 100 over 1. Now look closely. The, the, the definition of the ratio tells you what to do. In the first one, it's your gross profit over your sales times 100 over 1. Now the next one is one that, you've, that we've used quite a lot or that we're going to use quite a lot. That is the percentage of the gross profit on your sales. It's nothing else but the basic markup achieved by that business. And that is your gross profit divided by your cost of sales. The next one is your operating profit on sales. Again, your operating profit over your sales times 100 over 1. The next one, operating expenses on sales. Like Ashraf said, the definition gives you a description of what should go into the formula of that ratio. So it's your operating expenses divided by your sales. Then your, your percentage net profit on sales, obviously your net profit over your sales times 100 over 1. Why 100 over 1 in each case? Because you're expressing your answer as a percentage and therefore you need to convert it to a percentage multiplying it by 100 over 1. We've spoken about profitability, solvency and liquidity now. Now it's very important that you understand what are these things all about. Liquidity, we said it's to pay off its short term debt. Now what is the solvency ratio all about? This ratio determines the ability of the business to meet its liabilities. A business is solvent when the total assets exceeds the total liabilities. He owns more than what he owes. A business is insolvent when the liabilities are higher than the assets. He owes more than what it has. The amount by which the assets exceeds the total liabilities is in fact the owner's equity. Now what is owner's equity? It is the assets minus the liabilities. Remember we spoke about accounting equation. Assets equals owner's equity plus liabilities. And the to total solvency ratio is calculated as follows, where we say total assets to total liabilities. Now it's important that you know what is total assets made up out of. It is my fixed assets, which is my non-current assets, and my current assets. Total liabilities is the non-current liabilities and the current liabilities. Very important, it says total assets to total liabilities. Now obviously, you also have to do liquidity ratios. What are those? The ability for a business to meet its short-term debts. In other words, the ratio is a comparison between current assets and current liabilities. Current assets should be higher than current liabilities one should always have more than what one owes. Many accountants feel that the current ratio should be approximately two is to one to avoid liquidity problems. This is not a norm, as many businesses may operate successfully with a less favorable ratio. The ratio should not be too high, as this means that excess funds might be tied up in stock and trade in other receivables that do not earn a return. When cash, which should rather be invested where a higher return will be earned. The formula for this ratio is your current assets to your current liabilities. Remember, the three components of our current assets are trading in inventory, our receivables, 
and cash and cash equivalents and our current liabilities are payables and short-term loan. The asset test or the quick ratio, again, where does it get its name from? The name asset test was the actual asset that used to be poured to check whether the gold was actually fool's gold or real gold. So it's a quick test to check. In accounting terms, this ratio tests the ability of a business to meet its current liabilities under abnormal conditions. That is, when a business is experiencing a severe decline in sales, economic depression, etc. The current ratio includes trading stock. The asset test ratio excludes trading stock. Very important feature of this ratio. For a business to quickly pay off its debts, it would have to sell its stock first. Selling stock under pressure could result in huge losses. Stocks may have to be sold below cost. Now, very important to remember that the asset test ratio tests the liquidity of a business without being compelled to sell its stock. Only trade and other receivables and cash are considered in this calculation. These two current assets are the quick assets and many accountants feel that the quick asset ratio should be at least one to one. Now, the formula for this asset test ratio is stated as follows. We said it's the current assets minus the trading inventory to the current liabilities. What we will do now is we will break for an activity where you will go in and do the activity that we have set out for you. Please make sure that you learn these ratios. I'm sure you're now in a position to actually complete the ratios. It's very important that you know the formulas of those ratios and it's very important that you also know the format of what my income statement should look like because you're going to deal with this quite a lot. Until our next accounting lesson, keep on practicing. So remember, financial statements, an important feature of grade 10, also very important for examination purposes. Therefore, ensure that you are okay with it. You know exactly how to go about answering a question in it. And until our next lesson, practice and make sure you know what's happening. Bye-bye.